yeah, pretty much everywhere you walk in the house now, um, you're about two turns away from viewing an arcade machine or a pinball machine. Get ready for the next round. Hey guys, welcome to Spacey's Arcade. I am in the car, and I know some of you that have been watching the uh, the show for some time will know that being in the car is not necessarily a good thing for me right now because it means that I may be doing a pickup or I may be going somewhere else, like a pinball comp or something like that. And I sort of wish I could say I was going to a pinball comp because. <laughs> Yes, guys, I am in fact picking up another machine. I don't know where to start with this one, guys, because um, clearly I am unable to stop <laughs> buying machines. Um, I've got a real problem. It's been made worse because now I've been bitten somewhat by the pinball bug. And I only just picked up the Sorcerer machine guys the other day and we've yet to do the episode on the repair. I have actually started repairing that um, but I don't even have that going and here I am out buying another pinball machine. So like all the episodes before guys with these pickups there's got to be a backstory and this one is no different because I just you know seriously don't just randomly look at Gumtree to pick up machines there's got to be a reason for it and a damn good one well at least in my eyes so I've been looking around and I you know as I keep saying I always look I just love looking to see what comes up anyway all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff I like checking how things are going in terms of prices and what machines come up and what don't come up and um, and as you know from the sorcerer uh, episode if you saw that I picked that machine up at a pretty decent price because it needs a lot of work and we'll soon see if that actually ends up being a false economy because I'm going to have to put a bit of money into it to get it going but we'll, we'll see how that goes, It'll be a nice learning experience. This one on the other hand is um, probably, well it's, oh, it's the more expensive game, um, that's for sure, it's probably my most expensive game that I've, I've bought so far. Uh, it's not ridiculously expensive and it is under what I believe to be the market price for the pinball and I'll tell you what it is in a moment um, but yeah it's up there and that's because it's fully working and guys that's actually something that I'm pretty pleased about because right now I have far far too many projects I obviously don't have any space I have a um, a wife who is really at the end <laughs> of her tether I think with this hobby of mine so um, it was important at least that this machine was working so it is a working machine so what is it well it is a eight ball champ is what it's called now for you guys that know the 8-Ball series, um, and I, look I'm not a full bottle on it guys because I literally just sort of looked at this fairly recently, I am a lot more familiar with the sister machine in here, um, there's like two of them effectively. The first one, um, I'm not sure if the first one had another name other than, um, than the original 8-Ball, so there was one called just 8-Ball, I think it had this one that had the picture of the Fonzie on it, on the back. Well, the guy looks like the Fonz anyway. Um, and I think I played that on VP, and I don't think it was that great. The next one along with that was 8-Ball Deluxe, guys. And you must have heard of 8-Ball Deluxe. Uh, it was part of my top 10 VPX tables. It's just an awesome table. Um, I absolutely love it. And, I, you know, it's really one of my grail pinballs. Um, but it's really popular. It's in the top 100 um, on Pinside. And for that age of game, 
it's pretty impressive and um, I think number 66 or something like that so it's pretty popular but it's really expensive because of that and given the age of the game you're like paying a lot extra um, just for the popularity of that game now there's a couple of things I like really like about the game and um, that are like uh, pimple deluxe before I get on to pimple champ um, and that is um, 8 ball deluxe sorry I'm gonna keep saying pimple deluxe or pimple champ it's 8 ball so the 8 ball deluxe what I really like is uh, the, the voices it's got some cool voices they're, he's, they're always saying which ball you need to do it's a eight ball it's a pool table theme so it's you know shoot the one ball and go for the two and Get hit the, the eight ball fire pocket, pocket and all that good stuff and and um those sound effects are pretty cool but the whole theme being like a like a uh, pool table is very sort of family friendly and it's very friendly for any player to, to play, you know, it's not like a dragon theme or anything, you know, like, um, uh, you know, just a lot of the themes of pinball machines are sort of over the top and, and one particular theme and may not suit a lot of players. So, you know, you can't go wrong when you're, you know, doing an eight ball type um, uh, theme on the table. So I really like that. Um, the deluxe table is just super cool for just shooting down the balls and in order. Um, it's got a wall of targets on that particular one. And then after 8-Ball Deluxe, they released this newer one, which is 8-Ball Champ. And so you would expect the newer one would be better, but in fact, it's not as popular. However, when guys, when I fired this up on VPX, long before I even saw this was available, I actually really, really liked it. And straight away, I noticed it's using the same sounds as um, as pinball deluxe so uh, pinball won't go again uh, eight ball deluxe and um, I thought well that's pretty cool some people think that's pretty cheap of them to release a new version and use the same sounds as the last one but I think it's pretty cool it gives me the feel of eight ball deluxe um, and I like those sounds so that's half a half a win right there and the new table sort of set out much like a pool table like you've got to go for the shots as if they were sort of um, in the opposite pockets like on a real pool table um, so they sort of tried to mimic that sort of um, setup but what it means is that the middle of the play fields you know got quite a lot of gap as opposed to eight ball deluxe and um, it's a lot of precise aiming to get the different targets to get the ramp shots and stuff but it's actually got a little bit more complexity than pinball uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna get it right guys eight ball deluxe and uh, you know it, and from that perspective it's a, a little bit more of an involved game but it's easy to learn it's family friendly obviously I've got a family of four and it just seems to me like ticks a lot of the boxes if I can't get an eight ball deluxe this is the next best thing it's working I got it under market price um, it was initially I tried to do a trade with the guy but he wasn't interested in any of the video games that I have spare now <laughs> unfortunately so um, I did have to do a cash purchase on it but he did come down quite a lot so um, I'm happy with the price but it is yeah, as I said guys it's more because it's a working machine but that does mean when we get home <laughs> I can plug it in and actually just play um, is the idea uh, now where I am going to put it um, God knows guys I don't know and as I mentioned previously uh, my lovely wife is getting a little bit uh, a little bit toey and I don't know how much more I can get away with in terms of machines in the house so I'm gonna have to do something about that real soon I'm thinking but anyway first things first let's pick up this machine let's get it home I probably won't film again at the guy's place uh, like normal so we'll next shot we should be at home and uh, get it inside and let's set her up and have a game
Okay guys, it's in the house. <laughs> Finally in the house, all up and working. And uh, if I'm honest with you, it's actually been a week since I did the pickup. <laughs> so that night, um, again, it's always the same sort of thing when you get to the end of the day, especially when it's a night pickup. It's just like so knackering <laughs> at the end of it. Um, and I also want to give it some time just to, you know, go through a particular machine that I picked up um, just gives me a bit more time to sort of see what I've got and got myself in for. Uh, this little guy is an absolute beauty. Been having huge fun on this machine for the week, and I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. Um, but first of all, I want to show you the machine. But just before we do that, just a, a very quick um, comment about the pickup. The pickup itself was the easiest pickup uh, I've ever done absolutely the easiest and that was because um, the way that the the machine was already out the the front of the guy's house on his sort of uh, veranda area and I, he had a a, a a pinball jack in fact he makes these pinball jacks um, so he had the machine already jacked up on on wheels on this jack and when we got there we got to play the machine and um, I'll just talk about that in a moment but Effectively, when we wanted to load it up, I just reversed my car right up to the veranda, opened up the back, um, he wheeled it across, pushed it off the, uh, the pinball trolley straight into the back of the car. <laughs> it's just one slide, boom, and we closed it up. I mean, obviously we took the legs off uh, while it was on the trolley, but um, that was the hardest bit and really wasn't hard at all. It was just undo, bang, slide it in, close, gone. <laughs> So uh, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, that's definitely been the easiest. The, the hardest that, that uh, we've done, of course, was the Daytona pickup. That was a shocker, but um, anyway, that made the process easy. The guy was really nice. Um, he gave us a uh, yeah, gave us a chance to play the, the game outside. And I must admit, when I played it, it was to my sort of expectations in terms of the way it played. Um, it did feel like it was a little bit dead, and we'll talk about that, um, why that was. Um, but I thought, no, no, it looks good. Um, he showed me a couple of things, well, one thing in particular, and, uh, and then didn't tell me about a few other things, which is a bit of a shame because um, I think he would have definitely known about some of the other small issues with it, and they are minor. Um, I'd already bought the game, actually, I'd already transferred the money, so he really didn't need to withhold any information from me. <laughs> this was quite bizarre, but anyway. Uh, each to their own. Um, other, other than that, it was um, uh, a very nice experience and he was gracious enough to show through his other machines that he had. Uh, he had a Star Trek Next Generation, uh, had a Monopoly, um, an Evil Knievel, uh, I think one called Lucky Star, a very old EM, and um, he had a, what else did he have? He had an Alley. Alibaba, he had a Xenon, um, which is just really, really awesome. And I think there was a one other EM in there. So he let us have a few games of those as well, which was a lot of fun. Um, my son Dylan came to help pick up the machine, which was awesome. And um, yeah, and he had a, we had a great old chat and a yarn before we, uh, before we uh, bought it home. So all in all, terrific pickup. So guys, um, what happened when I got it home and what about the sort of, um, the s not, s not initially the slowness, but I just sort of thought the lack of um, uh, environmental um, experience. <laughs> I'll, show you what, I'll show you what I mean or explain to you what I mean because I have actually fixed that particular issue. Let's get the camera off the tripod and let me just show you a few things about the machine. So first things first, with the overall cabinet really really good shape. Yes this is supposed to have a black coin door and a red button here. <laughs> Looks a bit strange because it's not the same as a lot of other pinballs. Um, you know, there's a, there's a few little scuffs and stuff, and of course this little edge here, but I mean, that's really minor, guys. The side art is really good on both sides, but it is missing the red. And so I gather, effectively, it's been in the sun, and uh, all the red should be inside the lettering here, and I think there's some yellow in there as well, so the red and the yellow is gone. Effectively, if you look at the, uh, 
the main back glass, you can see the eight ball, it should be like that in terms of colouring on the side. It almost looks a little bit blue in this light as well, that green on the back. Um, in fact, it looks very blue at the moment, but that's really weird because sometimes I look at it and it looks green. But anyway, other than that, the actual artwork itself is really, really nice. You know, if I had the skills, and I don't really, um, I could probably go in and paint that red and yellow back in. But uh, even without that, it still stands up as it is, so that's very, very cool. On the playfield itself, really, really nice playfield. Um, protected with mylar and it's yeah it's in great condition guys absolute great condition i don't think there's really any major wear on the play field at all we have a few little issues like this guy shouldn't be on there this orange uh topper to the thumper bumpers and uh, i did a classy act because funnily enough this actually popped off <laughs> after about three games and then i realized that the little plastic tabs are broken on it they actually clip it in there so I got really classy guys and uh, got some blue tack around there <laughs> blue tack gets really nice and warm with the with the light and then melts in and makes it stick there nicely so <laughs> of course I will change that at some point um, but yeah that was I mean that was an obvious thing that I saw straight away uh, and uh, he pointed that uh, pointed that out to me obviously other than that, on the back glass itself, uh, we've just got a bit of T-moulding missing here. Um, no big deal at all. Get some new T-moulding, no problems. But the back glass, perfect. All the displays, perfect. Um, sorry about the light from the windows there, guys. But uh, yeah, the um, back glass is just absolutely fantastic in terms of quality. And uh, yeah, and the whole play field was great too. So other than that, there ended up being a few bulbs out which he didn't tell me about and you'd think that's quite minor but I think there's a couple of diodes that are causing problems for some of the lights so this one I could only get going with an LED I couldn't get going with an incandescent um, and it seems to me that this should be I think flashing along with the other uh, controlled lights here but it's not and I think that's just because it's getting some um, leakage, electronic leakage through there and it's just staying on lit. The same problem at the back here um, with the rollovers lights, obviously they should flash between one, two, three and should be able to change them. This was completely out, I couldn't get another incandescent light working in there. Again I could get an LED working in there and again I think it's because the diodes failed on it and it's just getting some electricity leakage through and lighting it up. I had to like really wiggle it around to even get it lit of course it's hopeless like this anyway because i've got to be able to change the uh change the uh, lights um when i do the lane changes so typically it's the um the diode uh, on the bowl holder itself so i need to check that out now one thing you didn't say and we probably detected it and i just sort of you know when you go and buy these machines you're always in a sort of different frame of mind and I think I remember the ball sort of getting stuck on this left hand side and you'll see here I've got some black gaffer tape um, here at the moment and that's because underneath there this piece of plastic has actually been busted like the balls come down at some point really hard and just smacked but the plastic in fact if you look at this side I was worried about the uh, window there but the, the piece under there has sort of got a bit of a sharp edge you can imagine the ball coming down here and cracking that bottom piece so that's what's happened on this side um, without the bit of tape here it gets stuck here quite often um, so I put a bit of tape just to help that but clearly I need to get a bottom piece to resolve that so other than that which is a bit of a pain um, getting this lit properly so I know when to shoot again or not because um, when you're playing two players it's useful to know if someone's got an extra ball and they need to shoot again um, so they don't rob your ball and of course the lane change one is of course problematic the only other thing very subtle things on the play field you can see here you can see there's like some red paint touch up has been done here because it's not as transparent um, and up the top here this one's just got a again a scratch here so I don't know what happened with that one why it got damaged so badly 
But yeah, that could potentially be replaced. Uh, other than that though, guys, the rest of it is super, super nice. Now, in terms of the initial slow play, so the thing is, is that um, he had it jacked up quite a bit on the back legs, but not as high as we have it now. I'd actually sort of got used to it, to be honest, for the week that I had it, and I, and I was actually quite liking the deliberate slow play to it. Um, but having said that, now that it's been jacked up, it certainly has given it a little bit more punch, and it hasn't changed the fun of the game at all. And look, at the end of the day, it's actually elevated the, the, the fun, there's no doubt about it. Um, all the shots that you can make, the cool shots, can still be made. Uh, is it not doing any weird sort of additional draining because of the extra slope? So yeah, I think we've got it dialed in really, really nice. So guys, let's uh, get this up on the tripod. Let's have some games um, and let me show you how it plays. And then I'm going to have a little bit of a, maybe a controversial chat about this game um, and how it fits in the 8-Ball series and what I think about it in relation to uh, especially it's more popular um, sibling, which is April Deluxe. We'll get back to that in a moment. First of all, let's have a crack. It just actually, just before we do, yes, the artwork. <laughs> it's a 50 style game, right? Mm, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, a bit later when we talk about April Deluxe as well. All right, let's get this set up, guys. Let me show you how this thing plays. Okay, guys, let's go. Okay. Now what we're trying to do is get these uh, balls on the side of the table and uh, we'll stand up targets that represent the balls that we're going for and that's one thing we're trying to do and the other thing is we want to try and make oh there's another one down we want to try and make the uh, that shot up there, but it needs to go all the way up so that we can get two times the play field, then three times, and then five times. So sometimes you can get it with that that flipper there, but uh, definitely the wrong angle with that occasion. Um, and one thing you'll notice, guys, in the background, you hear that sound? Here we go, so that's up get two times. So hear the sound in the background, which is, um, ooh, just missed the uh, 3X, which is very similar to 8-Ball Deluxe, has a sound like that going on in the background. Well, initially, that background sound wasn't, wasn't there when we picked the game up. Um, and that's why I thought, wow, it seems really sort of, you know, it doesn't seem to have a, a an environmental feel to it <laughs> and that was because it was missing that cool sound and that was just a setting guys um, which reminds me that this game has a special keypad for doing the settings um, there we go excellent um, three times play field so the keypad was actually broken as well which is the other thing you didn't tell me about now I managed to sort of half fix it um, enough to be able to change the settings and when I was able to change the settings I could get in and put the background sounds back in so I think that's why he had them off was that he hadn't worked out how to get the settings done and the machine had actually was showing a high score of 5,555,000 555 and when it shows that it means that the game has got some um, bad data at some point and uh, and it's reset itself and that's what it does to the high score so I knew that that had happened at some point um, he had got the uh, all the um, computer MPU all sorted out at one point so it wasn't working initially when he got it, so he had to get all that repaired. So I do, I do know that's um, in good shape. You probably can't see the score, no you can't, but uh, 
that's racked me up to 740,000 which is not too bad for the first ball and typically when I'm having a reasonable game I can sort of get that sort of score and then um, get it up over a mil oh wow I just jinxed myself <laughs> get it up over a mil we're on 870 now um, and that's the thing about this game is you, you have to get those um, multipliers like that and it's such a satisfying shot to get it both down from the lower flipper and also from that side flipper like I just showed um, but there's also other things you need to do behind we behind each uh, pull ball shot of each drop target there is another target you need to hit behind it which spells whoa down the side which spells out um, eight around here um, e i g h t so that's your eight um, and where the where the ball is I've got where that is now to where that is lit up um, so yeah guys what, what do I end up with uh, a million one 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 million one hundred fifty six thousand so um, this play field in fact I'll, I'll talk about the play field in a minute when we when we get the camera back off the um, the tripod because I want to sort of talk about it a little more let's just have one more game so you can get a bit of a feel for the way the ball floats around and as you can see it's got a bit of speed to it it's certainly not a slow game this is not EM territory um, and it's certainly a game where you're picking off oh wow you're picking off the shots on either side you're trying to get that um, multiplier up the top and that's when the big points start happening and it's one of those games you sort of you need to get all those extra things to get a really good score otherwise you could be playing for a long time and actually not get a very high score Little one here come on oh, down the guts Whew. and you can see so this time I've only got 168,000 and I'm on my last ball <laughs> that's, that's how this game can go but what I like about it is you don't you don't seem to lose on a lot of cheap shots in that you know you don't get some just random shot I mean there are a couple like that where you get a random shot and it just drains like all like that <laughs> um, but that's 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 okay that's sort of part of it if that happened all the time I would be really annoyed but I know I can get that target from here um, and most of the time it will come back into play so it's just occasionally you'll hit it badly and it comes straight down the middle um, same same thing off this flipper if you get it right off the edge it can hit the side here and bounce straight down down the side so there are those sorts of things in the play uh, which you'd expect in all tables but I just I'm, I have another game guys <laughs> I'm having another game I, I just find that there's such a nice it's an easy it's, it is an easy table to play um, and maybe some people that you know want a more challenging table they might think this is a bit bit too easy um, but it's the perfect game for a sort of family environment and even people that are fairly new to pinball it's pretty easy to work out what to do um, it's definitely not overly complex but it does have some depth for those guys that really want to um, have a real good game of it and I love how you got to you know shoot around the bottom half of the table here and it's real risky because of all these bounces like that but you can save it 
we get it back up the top, get it amongst the thumper bumpers, kick up the score, uh, use this side flipper, oh, I couldn't quite make it. Um, can we do it again? No. And, uh, and I must admit that side flipper is really, really useful in this game. Um, a lot of those side flippers tend to be a little bit weak or not serving much purpose. Here we go. Straight in there. God, that's a great shot. Oh, wow. Mistimed that completely. And of course, the guy's telling you which ball to sink next and I haven't oh, I haven't worked out if, if you get them in order if it does anything more special and what I should be doing at least to show you guys is yeah I should be getting getting all the eight balls um, to show you what it does when you're on the eight let's just see if I can park the ball a minute okay so at the moment I've got one, three, four and seven, so I need two, five and six. And you can see two ball is lit here, six is lit here and five is lit there. So I need to get one, two, three. And once I've got that, then I can get right up to the top for the eight ball. So uh, that's the plan, if I can do it or not. Another question. There we go, one down. That side one. Way. This is where it can get a little bit frantic. And the targets do come back up again. Um, and I'm trying to work. There we go. We're on the eight now. Way. Hit the glass. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Love that on 5x. So rack them up. Way got a bit of spin. So guys, you can see there was a heap of play going on there. That took me from 300,000 to over a million. Still going 1.1 million. I'll show you the score once we finish this game uh, on the second ball. But like all pinball, you know, you can have one great ball and then it all goes south. But see if I can keep this one going a bit longer. Oh wow, there you go. <laughs> I'm talking myself into it now. 1.3. So you can see guys, just even just with the effort that I put in here, um, just to get this 1.3 score that was an epic game. So, oh, I've got an extra. That's why I need that shoot again light working properly. Um, so I've got the extra ball lit here too, and there are settings you can set up about when you get the extra balls and stuff, and I did try uh, setting it up to a degree. Um, but I don't know if I've got it right. Initially I was having too many extra balls. Oh wow. In the middle. But now it seems to be just right. So let me show you the score here guys. Love how he says that at the end, one more game perhaps. And uh, there we go, 1.82, so almost 2 million. All right, well let's hop this off the tripod now you've seen the game in action. And now let's just talk about a few things in relation to this table again. Righto guys, so now I'm gonna be a little bit controversial <laughs> because I re my grail game in this series of the eight balls was and maybe still is i'm not sure but eight ball deluxe right that's the one that's the one everyone wants um, that's the one everyone goes on about and a lot of people don't give this version not much love and it's strange i mean this this one is the next version up um, after eight ball deluxe it came out afterwards 
And the funny thing is, is with the theme and the whole style of the table, given this sort of 50s look, whereas 8 Ball Deluxe had that really cool Western theme, this almost looks like they tried to make the table sort of look retro. <laughs> and, you know, on its own, it, like this, looking at it now, I, I don't mind it, you know, I, I actually don't mind it. Um, sometimes I see pictures without all the lights on and stuff, and it just looks really a bit bland. And certainly when you look at the really cool Western thing um, of 8 Ball Deluxe, it, there okay. seems to be sort of no comparison. Definitely wins out on artwork. But what about gameplay? Well, gameplay for 8 Ball Deluxe, I've always loved. I've always loved the fast, fluid play. But one thing, well there's been well, actually several things to the table which I've always irked me a little bit. And now that I've played this next version, 8 Ball Champ, I feel like I understand what the designers did to correct some of the problems in 8 Ball Deluxe. And because of that, I actually feel in some ways that this is the better game. Now, it's a little, a little bit difficult for me to actually make that big claim because I don't have a real 8 Ball Deluxe machine and clearly the, the machines themselves play much, much better than the VP virtual versions. But what I can say is this. First of all, the outlines. They've made this outline here bigger than on 8 Ball Deluxe. There are so many games in 8 Ball Deluxe, at least on the virtual version, where I just lose the ball over the side here, just constantly, over this side and this side. And they seem like really cheap losses. Uh, and sometimes your games can just be so short because they're just bang, bang, bang straight down the outlines. And again, maybe that's the virtual um, pin version. But they have extended the size of this inline here, or outline here. Um, as opposed to that one, and that does make a big difference. So that's the first thing I notice is an improvement. The second thing is, is, and some people have remarked that they don't like this, the fact that you've got all the individual balls are now separated in terms of drop targets around the table. And that does mimic a lot more like taking a shot. For the theme of this table, it's a lot more like taking a shot in each pocket of, a, of an eight ball table, or a pool table as we say here in Australia in NZ, but uh, I really like the fact they've broken up the, the targets and they're now making you, forcing you to shoot around very much like you would do on a real pool table. So I, I like that and I feel like I'm challenging all the time, left, right, left, right. I'm not just coming down the left hand side and just going across to a bank or just pushing up here to the bank target as you do in 8 Ball Deluxe. The next major thing, which is a big difference, I think, in terms of, I don't know, just the fun factor, for me anyway, the big score difference is getting the two times, three times, five times, and the extra bonuses. And on 8 Ball Deluxe, you would do that through this lane here. And they've got all the, the um, targets for two, three, five. So you can pretty much just shoot straight up and grab it. But on April Champ, you've got to get that up over the top and get it locked in to that top saucer um, to get it to go up. And it's so satisfying making that long shot. And of course, that is the final shot for the eight as well. Uh, and it just doubles as a really sort of tough shot. Often you can hit the post. It's really hard to line it up straight there. Um, or you hit the one, or you go slightly to the right and you go through the really cool spinner, which again is another nice addition to the table. And it does have a little bit more depth in terms of the, um, the extra targets you can need to collect and extra bonuses. And again, I haven't gone through all that myself, so I need to work all that stuff out. But funnily enough, the lane here up there, this one here and this one here is actually the same as 8 Ball Deluxe. They're just using the lanes differently. The spinner here, the, the two times targets here, and then of course they've got a different set of specials on this side. And I'm not, again, sure how these ones progress. The spinner ones, I think, once you rack them up and get to eight, I think that would have, should have progressed. See that back on the video, hopefully, on that game where I did that. 
um, and then that's really cool. You progress that up a couple of times and then you get right up to 5,000 per spin. So you can really rack up the points uh, in, in that style. So um, I think, I mean, again, April Deluxe has this flipper, but it has it on this side and it's used pretty much for going for the wall of targets. This one, um, really, you, you've only got the option of getting sort of the, the two, but you can get those two and you can get up into um, the two, two X, uh, 3X side of things. So yeah, guys, that's why I believe that this game is actually better. And from playing it and playing it and playing it, I just, I, I love playing this game. And it's like, I can't just have one game. Um, this is a, pin and I know there are pinball machines where you can, you know, you can have one game and walk away. Uh, but absolute magical table, I think underrated. Uh, often I see with people's ratings, they say, yeah, it's not as good as 8-Ball Deluxe, and then they've got an edit, you know, a month or so later, saying, oh, I played it a bit more, and it's, I'm liking it more, and, um, and I think that's the thing, is people often dismiss it, um, just thinking that 8-Ball Deluxe is the one to get. I think, guys, you need to give this a serious go. If you get the chance to get on one, Play it and play it for a long time. And once you get into about ooh, six, seven, eight games, you will really get a groove on. And uh, you'll be loving trying to get up the top left-hand corner there to get those multipliers and uh, attempting to break the high score. All right, guys. Well, let's finish up. So there you have it. <laughs> so happy with this guys. My first working pinball, of course, we've got the Sorcerer that we need to get going. I have been working on that machine. I'm so glad I've got this though. It has um, fed my need for real pinball um, while the Sorcerer gets rebuilt and just as well, because I think it's gonna take a bit longer than I thought. Um, but it's so nice to have this and I'm so glad how this has turned out in terms of the playability on the table has far exceeded my initial expectations. I thought it would be good. Um, I love the uh, the voices and stuff, which is the same belly squawk and talk from uh, Able Deluxe. Um, and now with the added sort of changes to the gameplay, which I can really appreciate what the designers did, I think this is a, this is a hidden gem. And uh, I'm gonna be enjoying playing the hell out of it. And I'll tell you what, it has changed my perception a little bit on virtual pinball and, um, and how good of a replacement it is for pinball. And I know all you guys that have played real pinball will probably be sitting there going, yeah, Greg, come on, get with the program. <laughs> of course, virtual pinball is not as good as real pinball. Um, it's, uh, I can see that it's gonna be a real, a real bug. And, and, I can also see that these sort of machines, guys, are the sort of machines that are also a lot more social. You know, um, you can have them in your games room. I think people just gravitate to playing a mechanical type of machine as opposed to a, a, a video machine. Um, but of course, pinballs are expensive, and that's a bit of a bit of a problem to get into. Um, so getting them at the right price, but then not spending a fortune trying to get them working and keeping them going is another problem. Anyway, we shall leave it there. Thanks again, everyone who has subscribed. If you like this sort of stuff, please, uh, please subscribe, hit the like button. Love to see you follow on with the journey. Shout out to all my favorite people that comment all the time, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'm behind on my comment replying, so I must get onto that um, as well, guys. But as I say, I always read them as they come through. Um, more stuff guys, more <laughs> random things. And yeah, how am I gonna keep this out here? This is not in the arcade guys, this is out in the lounge room. Um, I may require marital um, advice and assistance <laughs> in the future. <laughs> because uh, yeah, pretty much everywhere you walk in the house now, um, you're about 
two turns away from viewing an arcade machine or a pinball machine. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, take care, look after yourself and all that good stuff. I'm going to have one more game. Before I do, I need some coinage. Is this getting any better? It's not, is it? Um, mm, got a 20. <laughs> Fight like a robot.